Hey guys, we're live on the moon. Friday, Friday night, the eve before the supermoon. May the 4th, a little bit of wind. 7.58 p.m. I deliberately have gotten out here in a little breeze because I, I was so impressed with the blue background on the moon that I just had to come out and see it again. And what we're going to do is we're going to kind of canvas the moon and look at the at the scenery with the blue background. And and then I'm going to give you uh, a geography lesson. And see when I turn the, the brightness down, it's just, it's kind of dusk. See when I turn the brightness up, how you can see the blue, that blue will turn to be pure black in about 10 minutes so it should it should uh, be clear uh, that it's dark fairly fairly soon I hope you guys are doing well this uh, this, this is going to be an educational video uh, I'm going to kind of go around the moon and give you a uh, a science lesson, a geography lesson, an astronomy lesson, I guess that's the right way to say it. I'm going to point out some of the uh, the craters by name and we're going to zoom in and isn't that beautiful guys? Let me work that image just a little bit. It is just an incredibly, let me turn up the contrast and turn the brightness down up a little bit. See, we're at this uh, kind of fuzzy or down a little bit. Isn't that be isn't that beautiful? It, uh, I I really think it is. And we're gonna this evening we're gonna uh, kind of try to give you a, a geography lesson. And. Uh, and hopefully you might learn something. Right now I'm uh, taking a, a look at this moon with my uh, and see the bottom of the moon. See we're still a little bit in shadow. Let me go back to the right. See we're a little bit in shadow so you can isn't that pretty with the blue coming up in by the way, the moon, the way it works, when it's low in the sky, uh, there's more atmospherics, and the higher it gets, the clearer it, you know, it gets. But I know for a fact that this evening it's going to be cloudy and heavy clouds later on. So I decided that if I'm going to do this, I'm going to get out and do it pronto. And I'm going to even do it partly in the daylight. And I did that by by choice just because I wanted to catch some of these spectacular images and you can see the movement see the slight movement of the of the scope and sometimes it'll jump that that is not me I'm inside uh, my cool house with air air con in that beautiful look at that with air conditioning on and the uh, and the wind is out there with the uh, a wonderful, wonderful shot. Look at the coastlands there with this is really okay. Let me turn the brightness down. See how the as you turn um, it's just kind of like overpowering in that in that one corner. Just let me see if I can turn the contrast up. No, it's just. I tell you what, this super moon's going to be a bright moon. And look at that corner; it just overpowers you. See the see the yellows coming in. That's the sun reflecting, hitting the moon, and then see that really bright stuff, bright spot there. It's just, it's there now. Cl cl click, trip tripped over. It's kind of like an amplifier. It has a 
it's kind of like the transmission of your car. You know, when you go from gear to gear to gear, well, the light gets so high that it, and it changes the gain of the amplifier. Well, what we were looking at just a second ago, the sun is setting, and the sun uh, was very specifically uh, angled, like right there at the moon, and, and, and that brings it up. Hope you guys have had a good day. Um, I've had a lot of uh, people. Let me just go down the middle now and see see what we can see. And let me work this image right here. I've I've had a lot of people comment on my last video. I I don't I have my own opinions of it, and I'm I've got to be careful about what I say about these things. Mine is an educational channel, and I'm not here to push one agenda or anything. But you can make up. Now look at that. Make up your own mind on all that stuff. Isn't that great? Let's see what we can look at the coastline sticking out on the left. I've had this image before where I was so impressed with it. Let me see if I can just uh, turn up the color a little bit. To me, it looks like a watercolor where you take a a, a splotch a splotch of paint and you hit the canvas. And look at the look at the edge of the moon on the bottom side that's blue. Isn't that weird? You got the you got this crater coming out at you like an eye, and then below you got the uh, And let me turn the contrast up a little bit. And let me turn the autofocus on, see what that'll do. See, it's clear. Did It helped. Isn't that beautiful? And just for grins, let's zoom in on this. And this would be a good place to start. Uh, this crater, you're gonna, you're gonna learn some things today. To tonight, is, this is a learning session. That that crater right at the top, at the 12 o'clock position, that we always look at, that I, I make a watercolor out of. That is Copernicus, and right below that. Right below that is uh, Kepler, and it's in the Mare Instrum C. So the so the the blues that kind of surround these craters are a C. See, at one time. Uh, the scientists say, the astronomers say that the that this was volcanic, and that vol volcan volcanism existed on the moon, and there are they believe they've discovered lava pits where it, they came up. So all these so-called seas that we look at, these Mars. Let me turn up the brightness again so we can kind of see it over. It, it does overpower y'all kind of temperate are actually uh, lava beds and see that's where my my theory comes in of of the crystal uh, the crystal lake area down and, and and basically that it's crystalline okay now let's go over here to the horse. I always talk about the horse. Let me center it. I call it a horse. We go up. Right there, it's centered. See the it's a it, see that C. That C that you're looking at is called Mar Nubuum. N U B I U M. So that's a C of Nubuum. 
and that horse that you're looking at is actually under the the seabed. It's like looking through water below the like at a reef or something below the surface of the of the sea. So that horse is not it, it's probably below the it's below crystal. Now scientists says it's all sand and yeah, I mean it may well be. But it to me it looks like a, a sea. And I think at one time this uh, particular sea was full of lava and it, it, it you can see through it. Now a lot of these areas now see that big well, we're here we're going to go we're this is geography 101 on the moon. See that big crater come up that one that always overpowers you. Every time you look at it, it just blazes out at you when you look at it uh, in the sky. Uh, that is called Tycho. And it's the largest, uh, the largest crater on the moon. And look at the bands. It's like when an impact, this is an asteroid. It came in and see the kind of the bands that go out. These are the these are the when it hit, you know, and then it made the made all the bands. Now look at the edge of the moon right now. See how it's getting darker and darker and darker? Just like I said. I wanted to get out here right before right before so I could show you the blue again. I think that blue really is good. Now we're gonna go down to the Crystal Lake area. Okay. I'm giving you real names now. See this area right here. Let me zoom in. Go up a little bit and zoom in. And now, pause to refresh. I got to take a drink of my Starbucks coffee. Lately, I've had a habit of going to Starbucks in the afternoon, and you know, and I. Uh, uh, a thing of ice, uh, a Trenta large, Trenta super large iced coffee, black, no sugar, no cream, and then I kind of sip on it in the evenings. Now, see that buckling? That's the wind. But take a look at this image. The, this is a beautiful image, guys, and you're seeing the true color on the moon. This camera is so sensitive to the color, it just brings it out, it jumps out at you. See below the craters and how you got the browns, you know. But then in the Mars and the sea, you see how it's blue? That's just the way it is. And what makes this camera so unique, and when I'm using it to look at this stuff, you can see beneath, you can see features that you wouldn't otherwise see. Let me give you an example. We're going to go in and zoom in on Crystal Lake. Now, Crystal Lake, what is Crystal Lake? Well, it's not Crystal Lake. It's called Mar... Humorum, H-U-M-O-R-U-M. Why do I call it Crystal Lake? Well, uh, just because. <laughs> let me let me tell you why. When I started doing these videos, I I wanted to make it fun and easy for me to recognize things. So I instead of calling them fancy long names and scientific, which I could have. I'd never, I personally wouldn't remember it. So I have the ferret, I have the horse, I have the crystal lake. You know, these are landmarks and I can, you know, I, I, I hone in on them. Okay, that's Mar Human Norum. And it's a C again. And, and before I go and zoom in anymore, see that crater to the left that has the ramp. That's the one that has the ramp. That's get that's that's called crater uh, Gassendi, G A S S E N D I. And when I first, if you look at my earlier videos, when I looked looked at this thing at one time because I was looking at it uh, with inferior optics, it looked like it had a bubble over it, but it, it's no bubble and it's no there, there's no uh, UFO base in the crater, well there might be, but I mean those things that you're looking at in the middle of the crater are simply pile of rocks and we can we finally verify what they are by just zooming in. But I'm not going to go look that close tonight. I'm, I'm just giving you 
a geography uh, lesson. Okay. Now, I want you to take a, a real, before I zoom back out, and I know it's a little bit because the atmospherics, but take a look at the, see the points of light that are on the surface of that crater? Those are all, these are, those are impact craters. Now, my theory, this is my, my theory, is that it's kind of like a crystalline substance, and it landed on the, it's kind of like it landed on, on ice, you know, and it made a crater. But you can still see below it, and see, if you look, below, if you look at it close enough at the image, you'll see things but what look like below the surface on that crater, uh, on that surface. of the And and that's why, I, see the wind buckling, I'm going to go back out. Wind's blowing. Autofocus kicked in. So, I'm looking at all these Mars, all these seas, and seeing these uh, crater impacts on the surface and what looks to be below the surface. Uh, other things. Now I want to bring out one other point before I move on my geography lesson. I want you to take a look at this one. And this is another telling tale about what I'm talking about. I'm going to center this crater. This crater uh, on Crystal Lake. Kind of right. Well, it's a, it's above six. It's it, it's it's. I got to go up. I get excited. I got to push the right button. Uh, this crater looks like it's. And let me adjust the. That's a little bit better. Now take a look at that crater. That's kind of centered. You know, let me turn the contrast down a little bit. It's not as clear as it was the other night. And it'll get clearer later on, but I won't be able to see it when it's clear. See how it looks like it's half underwater? That crater is called Dopamar. And what what I'm trying to show you is it looks to me like it. what you're looking at is uh, a sea that filled with crisp, crystalline lava that, that froze up. You know, and then covered, it's kind of like a, a covered part of the crater. I do what I call common sense astronomy. I'm looking at things and trying to decide what I'm looking at. And, uh, and there are times when you can actually see the rim, the other side of that rim under, under the water, as it were. Okay, another thing that we've seen before is my dragon. See the dragon? It looks to me like a dragon. It's centered, actually centered. If you go on some of my earlier, I might refer to it as a dragon, but that's that's it's uh, coming up. And it's not centered now. It's That's what I call the dragon, kind of centered, just because it kind of looked to me like it had wings. Now take a look at this. This is a neat shot. This is pretty neat. Take a look at the shadow line below and see, see that one crater that... It looks like it, it's a pit or something. I don't know what. Let's zoom in on that. So you see unusual things on the shadow line. I, I don't know what we're looking at, guys. I really don't. But it's interesting. It, it's definitely, and it's educational. Okay. Continuing our uh, geography lesson, another very, very famous crater on the moon. is centered. And let me bring that up on my uh, and it's called Escartus Crater. A-R-I-S-T-A-R-C-H-U-S. I call it sometimes Escartes. It's Escartus. 
and it's a uh, well, it, it's a famous crater. A lot of uh, you have look at that picture, guys. Let me back out one more. That was just that. That's stunning. Autofocus is on. It's in focus. It's look at the blues. Look. You're getting a geography lesson in color. I mean, this is incredible, guys. I've never seen this particular crater in this sea in this particular light before. A lot of UFOologists uh, talk a lot about this crater. Well, you can look at and Google it up. I'm not going to talk about that right now. But I just want you to enjoy the beauty Pause and refresh. Take a drink of your Starbucks coffee. And enjoy. Let me turn up the brightness just a dab. Isn't that beautiful? Continuing our geography lesson for tonight. I don't do this every night, guys. I talk about uh, an area I call the coastlands, and those are actually, uh, let me turn the brightness down, they're centered now, they're, and they look like they have uh, to me it looks like you know, like the United States, and you're looking at the at the eastern seaboard, and then out in the right is the the ocean. You know, so it looks to me I call it coastlands. Well, that entire region is called Mont Jura, the the Jura, in other words, the Jura J U R A mountains. That crater at the very top of the Jura Mountains on your screen at the 12 o'clock position is called Plato. Now see the promontories? There's a prom it kind of looks like an E, you know, if you the promontory at the bottom of the coastlands is called Promontorium Hercules. So it's kind of like the Hercules Promontory. Let me, uh, let me actually make sure you can see it. Some of you complain, well, you don't have a, a pointer, Bill, and it makes it difficult. I know, I know. But see, I'm doing this. I, I, I really know, but I'm doing this in such a way that for me to capture this at 1080p, so you can watch it on your a uh, 54 inch TV set, which some of you do. See, center right there is Promontorium Hercules. Okay. Now, that promontory right there, see the one that's centered? See how it's jumping in and out of focus? And you can see it's not. not, not the best because, you know, we are coming up in the sky, but. That's Promontorium Laplace. Laplace. Oh, oh, what did you see? <laughs> I won't make any comments. I'm not going to argue with anybody about anything. <laughs> I am presenting for you what I see, what I, and, and, and you can, you can decide for yourself what you, what I, what I, what, what you saw. I'm not going to try to explain it away or anything. Okay, centered right now. See that kind of line that we've always seen? That's Mount Recti. So those are the Recti Mountains. And let me zoom back out. Go see, it's a little bit. And see, as I zoom out, the, the color hits a and the light changes on the lens, and it's isn't that beautiful? Okay. Okay. Plato is 
centered. Kind of, I'm kind of hitting the high points, or things that I've talked about before. And to the immediate right of Plato, centered, okay, is Archimedes crater, centered right now. You say, I can't see it, point to it. I'll zoom in, right centered, Archimedes, okay. And let me turn the brightness down just a dab. Directly above Archimedes is Autolycus, A U A U T O L Y C U S. And to the immediate left of Autolycus is the star crater. <laughs> it's, it's not the star crater. That's what I call it. Why do I call it the star crater? Because it's a star. You know, some nights we look at this thing, guys, and uh, we don't see the star. And some nights we look at it and we see the star. See the star? You can see the star tonight. And that crater is called Aristillus. See the star? Let me back out. Okay, that's a good, that's a beauty, that's a beautiful shot, guys. That is a beautiful shot. Continuing, continuing our geography lesson. I'm talking about topical features, big points, the big ticket items on the moon. You can play this to your kids in, in, in kindergarten or in high school or in college. And they will get a survey of the geographical features of the big ticket items. And I'm not going to make a comment on what I saw. What did I see? You make up your own mind. I'm tired of arguing with anybody. Okay. The mountain range in front of us are called... Let me read it right from the, it's called Montes Apennines. Those are the Alps. Those are the Alps. And, and let's go north to the Mar. Remember, I, I always talk of this line of demarcation that's really as clear as a crystal bell. This is kind of neat. I've had auto focus on for the entire session, and it's been pretty stable. Everyone see how it's jumping in and out? That's not the one that was it focusing. But see, the you got two C's. One's on the left, and one's on the right. The one on the right is bluer, and the one on the left is kind of uh, great. It's kind of like you're looking on the one on the left. You're looking at a, a a, oh, another thing that I saw flipping around. <laughs> I'm not going to talk about it. The one on the left, another one. Uh, <laughs> the one on the left is called Mar Serenteus. And then you have what I call the line of demarcation. That big crater above Mar Saren Tadius is called Posidon. P O S I D O N I U S. Oh, 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 F fleet. <laughs> I mean, swarms. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, you decide what I just, <laughs> I can't even, I'm not even going to comment. I'm not even going to comment. I could comment, but I, all I do is get myself in trouble. Because nobody believes what I say or what I see or what I saw. I mean, formations. 
<laughs> okay, continuing. See, Bill, old Bill's just trying to be real, basically showing you the moon and giving you a real simple geography lesson. And it's hard to even, there's so much stuff going on, it's hard, hard to even do it. I mean, I, you see what I'm talking about? What in the hell is going on? Well, that Mar right there that you're looking at is called Man Mar Tranquilidius, over which a fleet of saucers, of flying saucers, just blew on by. <laughs> no, no, no. They that what what you saw was a fleet of of bats in in formation. That's that's exactly what they were. They were bats in formation. Man, you you decide what you saw. Old Bill's just presenting the material. <laughs> you never know with Old Bill what he's going to come up with. Okay, what's this? And we're about running out of time according to my clock. That's the ferret, guys. That's the ferret. Mar Chrysium. And to the right of the ferret, to the right of the ferret, right there, that's Mar Fecunendius, F E C U N D I. T A T I S. Guys, you have seen some incredible stuff tonight. And I zip my mouth. I get so excited I can't talk about it. Otherwise, I'll get in trouble. I mean, I'm just showing you what I see. But I tell you what, I think I've seen some historical things tonight. I just wish uh, more people would look at it and uh, enjoy it. So we'll, we'll start uh, we'll stop where we started kinda <laughs> kinda at the line of demarcation the line of demarcation between Mar uh, Tranquinidius and uh, that's T R A N Q U I L L T A I T I S and Mar on the left is Serenteus S E R E N I T A T I S. So the Mar of uh, Serenity on the left and the Mar of Tranquility on the right with a demarcation line in the middle. Now that is a better way to put it. And at that, wishing you and yours clear skies, guys. <laughs>